Augustine, or Augustine, depending on whether or not you live in Florida, came up with this idea of just war. And if you recall, there are basically three major considerations. There's jus ad bellum. Are we just and justified in going to war? And you didn't think Latin was important. We then need to consider how are we behaving in war. So it's jus in bello. And then ultimately, how do we conclude the war? We must be just in all three of those categories. Now the first one is really the trickiest of all, and it's the biggest one of all, and that is jus ad bellum. Are we justified in going to war? Now, some theologians, they come up with five criteria, some seven. We're going to take a look at six and then try as best we can to answer the question, are we just in bombing Syria. Here is the first criteria in going to war. Is it a just cause? Now, believe it or not, some theologians actually disagree on this. Recently, two Southern Baptists, one was Russell D. Moore. He's the president of the Ethics and Liberty Commission. He said, absolutely. If a leader gasses 1,400 of its own people, that should cause a nation like ours to go, that's unjust. I would agree with that. That is not an act of justice that was entirely unjust. But other theologians, for instance, the Southern Baptist who advised George W. Bush on what was just war and what wasn't, he said, well, it was a terrible thing, but it doesn't justify war. You will need to draw your own conclusion. Is what happened over there something that should cause an entire nation to mar just put huge efforts and marshal its troops to go around the globe to wage war. That is the first criteria. Here is criteria number two. A just war must be declared by a lawful authority in response to an imminent threat. This is why some theologians think there's five questions, some say seven. We've combined these two, but we're going to judge them separately. If America says, yes, off to war we go, boys. We can say, well, that is a lawful authority that is waging a war. You and I as Christians, we can't do that. That's vigilantism. We might be annoyed with our northern neighbors, but you and I can't take it upon ourselves to gather our guns, and we've got lots of them because we're evangelical Christians, and wage war against Canada. Only a government can do that, and a valid government. Not a bunch of posers, not a bunch of rebels who are trying to take over, but a valid authority can only say it is time to go to war. I think in this instance we could say that criteria has been met, but what about the imminent threat part? It gets tricky. The president says, yeah, this is a present danger to the U.S. of A. Other people are going, no, not really. Once again, this helps us to realize this is not clear. It's murky. Because even when we have clear biblical principles, the circumstances can cause it to be just a little bit on the fuzzy side. I think there's one other thing that we need to remember, and this is, this is not intended to be a critique. We're trying to consider this as theologians. One of the things that we must do when we ponder a political, a military issue like this is that we don't think politically, or as libertarians, or republicans, or democrats, we think although Democrat and Christian. We think as Christians, is the information that we have from our government accurate? Uh, look, we, we know that that whole weapons of mass destruction business uh, about a decade or so ago wasn't exactly accurate. Is everything that we're hearing accurate? I think it's something we Christians need to consider because if we're trying to decide something very important, a life or death issue, and we've got biblical principles mostly that we're applying, we need to make sure that the information we have is indeed accurate. So I would ask you, is what happened in Syria an imminent threat? Mm -hmm. Here is the third criteria whether or not we should go to war. It should be a last resort. Is the bombing of Syria, we've, oh, we've tried everything with these people. We've met with them. We've boycotted them. We sent warships. We talked to other nations. We, have we done all of those things? Very simple. If we have not, we don't go to war. That's just war theory. So you need to conclude, has my government done everything possible to exhaust every avenue to try to get this man to stop this atrocious behavior? If not, we can say, didn't meet that criteria. 
One thing to consider when going to war as a Christian, do I need to meet all seven of these criteria? I think a general answer to that would be, yeah, I think we should. Because if we don't, ooh, we're talking about people dying here. And for the Christian, that should cause us to put the brakes on. Okay, maybe not definitively all seven or six or five, but we better be getting really close and we better be very convinced. Another step to going to war, number four, proportionality. Uh, our response, how does it compare to the act that was committed? He killed 1,400. Okay, it's really 100,000. He killed 1,400. How many will we kill? Is it proportional? How many buildings will we wipe out? How, what damage will it cause to their society, to their economy? Is it proportional? Another consideration in just war, number five, non-combatant immunity. I got to make sure that there isn't collateral damage to people who are minding their own beeswax. Are we certain, hey, as, as specific, we all understand that there's going to be some accidents and mistakes. Sinful human beings go to war. But are we really certain that we are going to minimize that to the absolute best way that we can? We don't want innocents dying. And we need to remember this in this particular situation. Muslims are more than happy to stick a baby in front of a bomb to keep you from sending it. Another consideration in going to war. Number six, probability of success. If we do this, will we be successful? Now, a lot of people are raising the question, what is success? Do we have that defined? If we don't, there's not a good probability of doing it because we don't know what it is, is, to quote a famous president. So I would ask you now, based on what you know about the serious situation, based on your understanding of just war, have we met the bar? Have we crossed the red line? It is one line for politicians. It is another altogether for Christians.